Good morning, people of God. What a gift it is to be in this sanctuary. What a gift it is to be with these people. What a gift it is to hear music not filtered through headphones or speakers. I'm so grateful for Sarah's return to us in person. Um, you'll notice in the announcement section of the bulletin, an announcement about our children's music program going forward. It's a work in progress, figuring out how to best make music with children in person together safely. So if you have a young person in your life who would be interested in making music with Sarah this year, her contact information is in the announcements, and she would love to hear from you and your I also want to note that um, it is hard to tell who people are with most of our faces covered. So please, if you have a name tag um, out there, you don't have to get up now and get it. But next time you come, please wear your name tag. And if you don't have a name tag, let myself or Linda Hare, who will wave her hand now, let one of us know and we'll get a name tag that we need for you. If you're joining for the Bible study on Paul today, we'll be out on the patio um, at Stacy Street. Let's take just a moment of silence to center ourselves in this time and space of worship. Call ourselves into worship. Our world offers us quick fixes and easy answers, but so often these do not satisfy. In worship, worship we gather to search for meaning. Throughout our days, we are bombarded with stories on the news, on social media, as we talk with our neighbors. In worship, worship we need the connections between our stories and God's story. In our everyday lives and in extraordinary moments, there is an opportunity for us to connect with the divine. In worship, we experience transcendence, opening us to the holiness always in our hearts.
May with me our prayer of invocation. God, who guided our ancestors through the wilderness, we too feel lost, weary, and anxious. We long to go back to the way things were. Be present with us in the here and now. Give us support in the here and now. Though we wander through our modern-day wildernesses, we do not wander without purpose, and we never walk alone. We lift up our prayers in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We confess our sins, not to beat ourselves up or to shame ourselves, to clear our consciences, and to free us to move on. Shepherding God, you guide us to new frontiers and call us to face the challenges of this day. But we are fearful and resistant. Lord, have mercy. Loving God, you ask us to be open to the pain and the beauty of this world but we numb and distract ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Sabbath-keeping God, you invite us to rest, but we believe ourselves too important to stop for a moment and enjoy what you have given. Lord, have mercy. Generous God, you invite us into communities that can support and challenge us but we choose to go it alone. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, here in the silence, we confess to you all the ways that we have not lived up to our own best hopes of who we are, and all the ways we have not lived up to your hopes for us. For all these sins we confess, forgive us. And from all that binds us, free us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved ones, God finds us in the wilderness and never leaves us there. God comes to us with guidance, love, mercy, and hope. God offers forgiveness and a fresh start. We face the challenges of our days together, strengthened by God's grace. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Numbers. Soon the riffraff among them started complaining and whining, and the Israelites said, Who will give us meat to eat? You remember the fish we used to eat freely in Egypt, and the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But out here, we're wasting away. There is nothing here but manna for us to look at. Moses heard the people, family after family, wailing at the entrances of their tents, so much so that the Lord's anger flared up again. Moses was aggrieved and said to God, Why do you treat me this way? Are you so displeased with me that you must burden me with this whole nation? Was it I who conceived these people? Was it I who gave birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom like a nurse with a baby at the breast to the land that I swore to give to their ancestors? Where am I to find me to give to these people when they come to me weeping and saying, Give us meat to eat? I cannot carry this nation alone. The weight is too much for me. If this is how you will deal with me, just allow me this one favor and kill me now. Spare me from seeing such misery as this. The Lord said to Moses, Gather together 70 of your elders, those you know to be leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting and take their place there with you. So Moses went and told the people what God had said. He gathered 70 elders and had them surround the tent. The Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was in Moses, God bestowed it on the 70 elders whom Moses had gathered there. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they were seized with prophesying and did not stop. Now two other elders, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had stayed behind in the camp. They had been summoned to the tent, but had not gone. Yet the Spirit had come to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. When a youth came running to tell Moses, Eldad and Medad were prophesying in the camp, Joshua and Nun, who from youth had been Moses' aide, cried, Moses, stop them. But Moses answered, are you jealous for my sake? If only all of God's people were prophets, if only the Lord would bestow the Spirit on them all. The Gospel lesson this morning is from Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone using your name to expel demons, and we tried to stop it since this person was not part of our group. Jesus said in reply, Don't try to stop it. No one who performs a miracle using my name can speak ill of me soon thereafter. Anyone who is not against us is with us. The truth is, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah, will certainly not go without a reward. We have heard these words from Scripture. Let us find in them the Word of God.
Please, will you pray with me? Holy God, shine your light upon us so that it might shine through us into this world. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered here in your sight be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The people were wandering in the wilderness. The book that we call Numbers is called in the Torah Ba Midbar, or In the Wilderness. When the Israelites escape from Egypt across the Red Sea, they don't immediately get to the Promised Land. First, they wander around for a while in the wilderness. It is an inhospitable place. Nothing grows in the rocky soil of the wilderness. They have trouble finding water. They have trouble finding food. They are constantly on the move. God provides miraculous nourishment for them, raining down from heaven. Manna, which literally means, what is it? Biblical descriptions of manna make it sound an awful lot, actually like frosted flakes, which are fine for one meal, maybe two, but not every day. And so the people begin to engage in a time-honored spiritual practice. They start whining and complaining. They wish for produce from the gardens of their oppressors. Cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, garlic. They wish for meat, a leg of lamb, or a small ghost dove, some variety, some flavor. The wilderness is so bland, so tiresome, so difficult that they wish to go back to the place where they were slaves. Better, they imagine, to do back-breaking, brick-making, but have salads, than to wander towards some ill-defined promised land. They are in the wilderness and they want to go back. These wilderness stories have been resonating me so much during the pandemic. Truthfully, I don't have any stomach for the miracles of Jesus right now. Not with the whole world falling apart and no miracles in sight. What makes sense to me is this. People in a place of suffering, not knowing where they are going or when they will get there or what will sustain them in the meantime, we are a wilderness people right now. And we, we want to go back. We long for things to be back how they used to be. We like to go before we knew how vulnerable we all are. We were more comfortable before we knew how much could be taken away and how quickly we liked when we could get on planes and escape the drudgery of our days to go somewhere exotic or just somewhere familiar. We preferred not knowing how divided our country was, how infected with racism, how unable to speak across differences. We are a wilderness people in these days, and we thought our wandering wilderness would be over by now. It is emphatically not. Worse yet, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we still do not know exactly where we are going. We do not know how we will get there. 
We do not know what will sustain us on the way. Like the Israelites who are weary of eating manna, many of us are getting tired of the day-to-day -day reality of living through a pandemic, while also living through a climate crisis, while also living through a deep political and social division in our country. We need something to sustain us in these draining, difficult days. Hear again what Moses, the leader of the Israelites, said to God, I cannot carry this alone. The weight is too much for me. If this is how you will deal with me, just allow me this one favor and kill me now. Spare me from seeing such misery as this. Spare me from seeing such misery as this. God did not spare Moses from seeing such misery, and God has also not spared us from seeing such misery. But here is what God did do. God gave Moses people to share the load. None of us can carry all of this suffering on our own. None of us can bear it. So we live in a world that teaches us to be self-sufficient and to rely only on ourselves. Deep down, we know that we need each other. When Moses was unable to lead the Israelites by himself, God gave a bit of the Spirit, not to one, not to two or five people, but seven. Moses, who previously had felt he had to carry that nation alone, now shared the load with 70 others. When parents are unable to bear the work of raising children during a pandemic, God gives them grandparents and teachers. God gives them friends who drink coffee with them and not escape the mess of their lives, but just sit in it. When our parents and loved ones are aging, God gives us home health aids who will treat our mothers like their own. God gives us neighbors to drop off casseroles on our porches. God gives us people who have been through it before and can walk with us through rough patches. In this past year, I know that you have found yourselves complaining whining in the wilderness. In this past year, so many times, I have felt in my soul the words Moses cried out to God, I cannot carry this alone. The weight is too much for me. Spare me from seeing such misery as this. Beloved, when the world seems as though it's falling apart, God will not spare us from seeing misery. We must look at the suffering in this world square in the face. The wildfires, the asylum seekers at the border, the ICUs filling up with unvaccinated COVID patients. We must face this suffering, but we need not face it alone. God has given us a church. In this community, whether we are gathered in mud boots at the lighthouse or here in the sanctuary or in a Zoom room with our sweatpants on, each of us has been given a bit of God's spirit. That bit of light or spark or wonder within us, that bit of wisdom, that voice inside us that tells us to reach out and care for someone else, that is God's spirit given to us, whether we ask for it or not, just like it was given to those two elders who went to the tent of meeting, and just like it was given to those two elders, Eldad and Medad, who 
who had been summoned but didn't show up. Together, we face the suffering and the challenges of this world and this time. Together, we seek meaning and purpose in this world. Together, we listen to the sacred stories of our faith and connect them to our stories. Together, we welcome babies and children. Together, we bury our dead. Together, we care for our neighbors. So at times they wanted to, the Israelites did not turn around and go back to Egypt, back to the land where they were held as slaves. Rather, they wandered in the wilderness for years and years before finally crossing over into the promised land. We will not go back to the way things were. But we can and we will move forward into a new and better normal. We will move forward together, each of us bearing a bit of God's spirit. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for this church, this community, these people. God, we thank you for the reminder that we do not have to go it alone. Help us to be a people who not just offer help when help is needed, but who ask for and receive help when we need it. Help us live more and more into interdependence. Help us to rely on you, your sustaining spirit. Help us to rely on one another. In a time of so much fear and so much division and so much isolation, find us together that we may face the suffering of this world together and be part of the work of healing together. There is so much that is broken in this world. Hear us in the silence as we lift up our prayers for this hurting world. There is so much suffering inside of ourselves, in our minds and spirits, in our relationships and our communities. Hear us as we pray for ourselves and those we love. We don't ask for too much, just a bit of your spirit to sustain us in this wilderness journey. Just a few fellow travelers to wander with us. Just your presence with us, shining on us and through us. We pray for this and we pray all things. In the name and in the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. God has indeed asked us to share the work 
caring for this world. And God has asked us to share the work of caring for this church. I'll invite our deacons forward right now to receive our financial offerings. And I remind us also to think of all of the ways that we can offer of our spirits, of our prayers, and of our efforts for this church and for this Thank you. 
do hope that we will stick around and say hi to new faces and old friends outside on our patio enjoying this beautiful day. And I will bless you now with the benediction that was given to Moses and the Israelites when they were wandering around in the wilderness before they had made it to the promised land. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. Amen.